Dan, have you ever seen anything like this in, in your career? No, Jimmy, I have not. You know, I've been blessed to live this long. I'm 89 years old, and I've seen a few things uh, over the years, including the Great Depression, World War II, uh, Watergate, 9-11, so many things. I've never seen anything like this. That I, You know, my reaction, I think, was what, what was the most common reaction of the day. I cannot believe that I'm seeing this. I can't believe I'm watching this. As I believe you mentioned somewhere along the way, it was like watching a, a very bad horror movie, horror movie for our country. Yeah. And no, I've never, I've never seen anything like this before, and neither has any other American, thank God, and let us hope we never see it again. The last I heard is that the Senate wanted to go back in as soon as they can and continue and get the count. What happens now with the vote? Well, uh, what happens now, and I would say, Jimmy, having talked as we have seriously about what happened today with the mob violence and the mob storming into the Capitol, the history is going to record that today's big headlines are sometime late tonight or sometime tomorrow, the Biden uh, election is going to be certified by the Congress. The Congress is going to have their vote certifying the Electoral College vote, and Joe Biden will be officially, formally uh, the new uh, president-elect of the United States, and Kamala Harris will be the new vice president-elect. That's going to be, you know, that's set, and history will record that as the big headline. The second headline is that the Democrats are going to control the Senate if, if these uh, results in Georgia hold, and this is the way it looks, that there are going to be two new Democratic senators in Georgia. And, you know, this this is a whole new day for the country. In 13 days, we'll have a new president, new vice president, and if the Georgia results hold, which I expect they will, the Senate will be controlled by the Democrats uh, since Kamala Harris has a swing vote. Uh, it's going to be a new day for the country. And those who took part in storming the Capitol today History will footnote them, but it will footnote them in shame. The real people, the real heroes of this democracy today are one, my old friend, the late John Lewis, uh, Miss Abrams, Stacey Abrams in Georgia, and all those people who in the runoff election in both parties did what they were supposed to do. They block walked, they knocked on doors to take part in the democratic process and it wants the count, the final counts in, they accept it. These are the heroes of this day. These people who shamed themselves and shamed our country by storming our capital and going inside and, and, and taking part in violence inside the capital are, are the ones that should be shamed today. And that's that really should be the news of the day. Unfortunately, we're going to be distracted for some time by this nastiness that happens at the Capitol. Do you, do you think Trump really believes that he, the election was rigged, or does he have a different agenda? I do not. Uh, I will say, how, uh, how could I know what's in Donald Trump's heart? Uh, I don't. But I, I, you, and the straight answer to your question, I think he, he knows exactly what he's doing. I think he knows he lost. He's the quintessential poor loser. I think he all along took the attitude, if I don't win the vote, then I'm gonna to try to uh, make sure that nobody accepts the, the honest vote. I, I think he's known what he's doing all along. I think he knows what he's doing now. And I think he's having uh, feeling very good about himself because today he, he got the, the whole headlines, the whole attention all came to him and his movement away from the fact that Biden had won the election and that two new Democratic senators had been elected in Georgia apparently and the Democrats have control of the Senate. So I think he's feeling pretty good about himself at this moment. Uh, what's next for uh, uh, President-elect Biden? Uh, he, he, he has to unite the country. How does he do that? How do we move forward as a country? Uh, what's at stake here? Well, what's at stake is the very future of the United States of America. You know, we have had the world's most successful uh, democratic government, the most successful democratic government in the history of the world that ours is a constitutional republic based on the principles of freedom and democracy. The question has always been, can we hold ourselves together? And that is the major challenge of the Biden administration. And it's no small challenge because well over 75, 76 million Americans voted for Donald Trump. 
and trying to reestablish some normal amount of unity in a country in the situation we're in now is a tremendous challenge for President Biden. I do think he has to make a decision pretty early whether he is to be a transitional president or a transformational president. That is, he's just going to be sort of a president who reestablished some norms, but just was waiting for the next president to be really transformed. Or is he going to try to be a transformational president? A lot of that depends on what happens with those within the Republican Party. How many of those in the Republican Party hold on to the, the Trump fantasy and try to keep Trumpism in control? Or do they take their party in a different direction. But the challenge for Biden right away uh, is to decide and to act upon whether he's transitional or whether he's just a, uh, a transformational president. Uh, Dan, I thank you for all the years of uh, your work in journalism. And I also want to thank you for your tweets because uh, they are uh, uh, calming uh, in, in, in a lot of this uh, craziness that's surrounding us. Uh, so, uh, I, and I thank you again for being on our, our program tonight. I really appreciate that, Jimmy. I would like to leave it up on an up note, and I think we should. You know, we all sing, or used to sing, God bless America. Uh, God bless America, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above and from within. We might not sing it tonight, but we might want to hum it and just play the words over in our head, because if we hold steady, we're going to be okay. My thanks to Dan Rather. You can see season eight of the show, The Big Interview, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on Access TV.